as I prayed over what I wanted to share with my brothers, um, I was thinking about using just some martial art techniques to show brothers how to defend yourselves. But then I thought about my journey through my training and through life. I can teach you all the techniques in the world, but if you haven't dealt with your soul, nothing will work when it's really time for you to fight. My mother, I just buried my mother two weeks ago. <clears throat> and I gave her my all. And I asked God prior to her developing dementia, I said, this soul in me, this was calling me to rebel and be angry at my father because he wasn't there. For me not to have patience with my wife, I need you to deal with this. I said, gracefully break me, whatever you need to do to get me under your control. 2009, I had shoulder surgery, outpatient surgery, labrum, torn from bench pressing, almost died. My lungs started filling with fluid. They run to get my wife, who's an RN, asking her what to do, and they're the doctors. What's deep about it, the Lord told me it was about to start. I had my beard trimmed up. I didn't have no hair, I lost that. <laughs> so I had my beard trimmed up and I had my son's hair cut. My wife was like, why are you doing that? She didn't know I was doing it so the mortician wouldn't mess me up in the casket. I wake, my wife tells me an accident happened, such and such, and I just put my hand up because I didn't want to talk. So while I had this uh, trach down my throat for me to breathe, because literally I couldn't breathe on my own, God was like, relax, it's about to start. And so once I calmed down and dealt with my anxiety, they removed the trach and it began. 2010, we purchased a home that needed to be rehabbed. I own my own construction company. I had to rehab it by myself. After that, my mother, I get a call. I sent her to uh, Atlanta to be with her best friend until I can move her in our house, because that's why I bought the house. I get a call, she's cussing, throwing my, uh, friends, her friend's furniture around, and then that begins. So all of this is compounding on me, and it's been a six-year journey. At the same time, I'm still training in the arts, understanding the part of breaking the soul, dealing with what's in our way, what's stopping us from resting, what's stopping us from remaining calm. And so as I was preparing this presentation, I said, wherever you want me to go, God, just lead me for you guys. And so you may, we may be able to work on one technique or so, but it's more important that we understand the real problem is our soul. Once we get that under control, then everything else will fall in line. The Cave of Adullam Transformation Academy, Transformational Training Academy, I started in 2008 when I realized that all the talking wasn't really working when I realized that our boys needed to be tested and not just talked to. Our mission is to create young men that are physically conscious and spiritually strong enough to navigate through the pressures of this world without succumbing to their emotions. And as you can see from some of the images here, um, this is, these boys here were six years old in this picture. Many, two of them were diagnosed ADHD, but after I taught them how to remain calm, under the pressure of combat, they can sit still in the classroom without medication. In grappling, we do uh, sweeps. The principle is a righteous man falls seven times, yet he still arises. How often do we hit the ground and we still get up? How was we just disappointed because we couldn't get in the White House, but we still rose? <coughs> So that's a good principle to teach men, because you have to be relaxed to take a fall. You ever notice drunk drivers, when they hit someone, they always live, but everyone else seems to die? They're relaxed. Boom! Yeah. So if I was to sweep, even if it was the ground, he has to relax to take the fall. If he remains stiff, he hurt himself. So how often, so I'm teaching my boys, look, Nothing that is hard is, well, mistakes are our best teachers. So to get them over a fear of failure, because we all work with black men, they always gravitate what appears to be easy, maybe like selling drugs or whatever. Or we as men gravitate what appears to be easy. 
instead of committing to one woman, we have more than one woman. The principle I'm trying to say is that the fear of failure was hindering my boys from really walking in their purpose. The fear of failure hindered me for years from even coming up here sharing this because I'm more of a private teacher. I like being one-on-one -on -one with my students. But it was clear that if God can't use me before my brothers that are doing the same work, really, how can he be manifested throughout this country? So I had to submit and control my soul. Then most importantly, we teach our boys at a young age how to rest. I asked the whole group of them one day, I said, and their fathers was present because we engaged the fathers. I said, do we do a good job at teaching you how to rest? And they were scared to respond. I said, no, speak up. Then the men was like, speak up, son. They said, no, we never see our fathers rest. So what God was showing me, before you teach them how to fight, you got to teach them how to rest. Because what is happening, gentlemen, and we all are going through the same things. We don't fight from rest. We work from weariness. We, we, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. This is one way we engage the fathers. For the initiation test into the cave of Adullam, a father has to do push-ups with his son on his back, representing that he will support his son through the transformation process. And this is a beautiful sight. The kids love it to see a man uh, step up and, and, and embrace and to challenge and push his own son. And what is beautiful about it is that the kids that come without their fathers, the other fathers jump in and do push-ups with them, representing, we got your back, son. Why do we need emotional stability? The history of the cave of Adullam was where King, well, David ran from King Saul, all right? And when he went to this cave, people, his family heard that he was there. 400 men who were in debt, distressed, and discontented gathered there and made him their captain. So when I thought about being in debt, being distressed, and discontented, who do you think I thought of? The people we're trying to rescue. What happened is that it's amazing. No one really pondered what happened in the cave because those same men are the same men who helped David defeat the Philistines to bring uh, uh, back Israel to its glory. So what happened? What happened in that cave that was so powerful? Those men, from me studying, it was an art called Abir which Abraham's trained warriors were trained in. This art challenged and taught the biblical principles, but it tied it to combat to make sure you knew exactly what you were taught. It's like, it was a scene in the, morph, in the Matrix I love when Neo got downloaded the program to learn Kung Fu. He said, hey, I know Kung Fu. Morpheus leaned over, he said, show me. That's what our boys are desiring. I mean, all of you brothers in here are gifted, and there's ways you can apply these principles to every part of your work. Um, like I laid ceramic tile for a living. I know if my mortar bed isn't uh, uh, level, it isn't solid, whatever I sit on top will crack, because it's the foundation. That's a principle for them to take in their work, in school, and at home. The reason martial arts is so powerful because it challenges you it, it's meant for uh, uh, introspective training, basically challenging you with your fears, your lack of focus, anxieties, uh, your, your tends to, tend to, uh, how you tend to worry. And let me give you an example. I'm a married man. He grabs me. This is a woman that I'm attracted to. So I'm in school serving my boys, and I know she's a fine-looking teacher, right? I try to stay here and be a strong man because I like the attention. But I know this blow is coming. Bring the blow to my face. What if my wife sees this? What if I get hit and now I'm in the car with her? So what we tend to do as men, we stay here because we're strong. We stay fighting and we get knocked out. When what we should do when a woman grabs and she comes and boom, I'll come underneath. Then I can hit him or I can turn him this way. Then I control them. But that would have never, that could have never happened. That could have never happened if I first wouldn't have controlled my soul. In a physical confrontation, my soul is, I could hit him easily. My soul is saying, what you doing grabbing me? 
I don't have time for that. I have to get out the way. So these principles are something that we all must embrace as men. This was my, well, this is my best friend, Daryl. This is him walking down the aisle at my wedding. I looked up to him because not only was he, like he had the best physique I've ever seen in, in my life, but he was a hard worker, loving father of two beautiful daughters, took care of his mother, and was no, he could work all day. So I always would say, when God would say, you need to rest, I said, well, Big D can do it. I can keep going. Well, unfortunately, my brother passed in 2004. Dropped dead of a uh, massive heart attack at 41. He ate clean, didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't party. But the stress and the lack of rest killed him. The energy drinks, us living off our adrenal gland, is insane. That is meant for emergencies only. And I talk about it as I share you my story. So as I've been listening and, and talking and praying with brothers, and what's grieving me is what I'm seeing from all of us is that we're breaking down. Eventually, it will get to you. If you don't rest, it's going to catch you. The older we get, we realize that. But the majority in here are younger than me. And you think you can keep going and keep going, but eventually you're going to crash. This is Brother Tafuri. He gave me permission to use this image that he posted on Facebook. We all know what he do in Detroit, how hard this brother works, right? He doesn't rest. He almost died because of pneumonia. That's him having a breathing treatment in the hospital. We know this brother, right? Brother Shaka. Let me read to you what he wrote. He says, today when, this is when Prince had died, he said, today when I learned of Prince's death, I thought about the conversation I had with my bro, Van Jones, about taking care of ourselves. For the past few days, I have been battling a sinus infection and was doing what I usually do when I am sick. Usually, I let it run its course and wait for it to go away. That's the course I was on, even though this has been the worst I've ever dealt with. But today, after hearing about Prince, I decided to go to urgent care. Turns out the sinus infection spread to my lungs and I have pneumonia, which the doctor said would have got progressively worse had I not come in today. More of the story, listen to your body and to your friends who encourage you to take care of yourself. This is Brother Joe Williams. Anyone in prison reform should know this brother. Beautiful brother. He posted this on Facebook, almost died. And he told, this is what he said. He said, if I knew I would live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. Because he's a soldier, just like all of us in here. If an emergency pop off, we're going. That's just how we are. The problem is we're going to be going another place too soon. I have a saying, if you don't rest from work, work will rest you in peace. This is me. I was a music producer back in the day. Produced Red Man, Corrupt. Um, that's me in my studio in my basement, working late hours, trying to get the album out. I did a 28-hour session with Corrupt one time. That's insane. I stayed up 28 hours. This is me when I owned my own construction company, tired, working endless hours, until I ran into an Italian. Uh, he told me, he says, Jason, he says, do not be like the Americans. I said, what do you mean? He says, Americans live to work. I want you to work to live. He says, in Italy, the town would shut down literally at 6 o'clock. You couldn't work anymore. That's why you see the big families and the pictures of the mob. and all. They was big on that. But we've lost that. Rest is power, gentlemen. That's how your body is healed, and you'll see in a second. So as you see, none of the images have changed except the attire. From a wife beater to uh, a construction outfit to a business suit, I'm still fatigued and tired because I haven't under, I didn't embrace the principle of rest. I started working from weariness like my father did. All I saw him do was work. So I adopted that mentality and it eventually got to me. At one point in my life, I knew something was wrong. Here I am physically strong. I lost 17 pounds. I'm physically strong. I go to my doctor and I'm like, something's wrong. He says, you're checking out fine. Your blood pressure is on point. Nothing is wrong with you. Then he tells me, Go see a holistic doctor. 
I wavered on that. Then when I was doing jujitsu, my jujitsu coach say, go see a holistic doctor. I got someone. So when I went, well, let me deal with this principle first, because the next slide is next. Psalm 127.2. It is useless for you to work or grind so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives to his beloved even in their sleep. How powerful is that for us in our work? One pastor taught me a lesson. He said, a member came up to him Sunday like, Pastor, I need to meet with you. Emergency. It's, a, it's an emergency. I need to meet with you right now. He says, hold up. He says, it waited this long. He said, when did this happen? She said, Tuesday. He said, it waited this long. You can't wait till next week? And she backed up. She says, I'm sorry. Because what we tend to do in this work, we make everyone else's emergency more important to us than it really is to them. And it's killing us. So this is my blood, gentlemen. Check this out. This is my blood before. Do you see any blood cells? <coughs> Say no. no. <laughs> They're clotting together. This was on the, the screen in, in the, my, my, the clinic. The doctor sits me down. He says, look, my man. He says, I need you to drink some water right now. I said, what's up? He says, it's not supposed to look like this. He says, you're borderline. You're about to have a heart attack. So you know who I thought of, right? My best friend, Daryl, who worked hard. Weight training. We got to stand thinking about weightlifting. It's still stress, gentlemen. If you're benching 225, this is stress. If you are under stress and you want to go to the gym, do cardio. Like cardio. That's it. As soon as you grab that weight, you're stressing yourself out and it's compounding and it's killing us. The glory in this, I broke down crying in the front of the clinic. I wasn't scared of dying, because many of us, if we be real with ourselves, we don't really care about living sometimes, because the fight is so hard at times. I was crying because God still loved me enough that he still pursued me to save my life. That's what broke me down, because he told me Stop eating all that meat. Stop taking all those protein supplements. It's killing you. And he was right. And this is what's deep. The holistic doctor told me I had to cut meat out. I need you to drink water and eat veg a vegetarian diet for four months. That was a radical shift. The next day I did it. This is what's interesting. He says, but for the first two to three days, I don't need you to do anything. He says, if you read your Bible, I want you to turn the pages like this. He says, that's how close you are to dying. Let me show you guys grace in this. As you know, my mother just passed, and dementia has been a journey. He said, if she would have died that week, he says, I would have died right after her. He says, you came to see me at the right time. That was number God's grace. Don't miss the principle, though, for my healing. It was not the diet, per se. It was the rest. So I started telling people, no, I can't do this. I turned down $50,000 in potential funding because it, 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 it needed the, 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 uh, uh, the project needed me to create something new. I said, I need to stay with what I'm doing. That is killing me, always trying to find a new idea to get some resources. I said, I need to walk in this one thing God is calling me to do so that I can live to do it. Look at my blood after I stayed obedient to what he prescribed. And so now, you know, I got a big head. <laughs> ain't, ain't no secret. All right, <laughs> so listen. It was hard for me to lose all the weight I had. If you saw me before, I had the trap shoulders. Sit up, Brian. I know you hate me. Just, you might, everybody has seen you, brother. Just stand up, man. All right. Oh, yeah. I don't want to lie to nobody. I don't, where, where the predator at? Where brother at? There you go. Stand up, brother. No, hey, stand up. Yeah. Stand up, baby. And that, okay. That's a good look. I was close to that. I needed balance in my body because of my head. <laughs> so I, you good. Your head, your head ain't big as mine. All right. So now, what did that do to my pride? 
Do we see the soul? What did God do to my pride? He says, you got confidence in stuff that don't matter. He said, I'm going to take away your body. This is your last stage of your breaking. Jeez. Then I had this passion for food. I found joy in eating. Because I'm taking that away. Because that's not joy. He says, what I give you will be sustained. I would go visit my mother and she would have a, a nervous breakdown and cuss at me and I had to step out the room and step back in to reset because I understood I had to check my soul because my soul was getting emotional. I said, I don't have time for this right now. Right now, I got to serve my mom. All of that, gentlemen, we all have our tests going on right now. We all have our training going on right now in our lives. You guys are thinking of some things right now like, I got some things I got to deal with. What makes me different from you is that I embraced it. That's it. God wants us all to transform, brothers. He doesn't desire for us to be working like we're working. When he says, come to me, those who are weary and heavily burdened, I will give you rest. He wasn't just talking to the people we serve. Talking to the servants. And we look up the word rest in the Greek and you really study it. It also means recreation. So he says, come to me and I will give you. How about this word? Fun. When last time you had fun? See? Yeah, I mean, and then, then, and then not, and look, I'm a family man, but then our fun is tied to our family. But when is the last time you had fun? That's something else I want you to think about, and I want you to snatch that back. This is me after God slipped me right back where I needed to be. But that was all I lost. <laughs> I thought I was strong before, I looked good, but inside I was dying. How many of us walk around like we strong, but inside we are hurting? I talked to one brother here, he never cried before to his wife. I said, man, I cry to my wife whenever I'm hurting. I said, you don't cry to your wife? He says, no, that's very dangerous because you're holding in things that are gonna come out later. It will, trust me, because I used to do it. Now. I'm going to show you something else. So when do we change this narrative that's coming up? I love my elders. As I see me looking at you, I love my elders. How often do we see this image, gentlemen? When we see an older man with his wife, he's the one that's the, uh, broken down and disabled. But his wife, she's like, come on, come on. And he, when can we change that? You're going to start seeing that a lot more. Now that I showed you that, I got several pictures of that. And it grieves me because we can stop this. This next video is going to bless you. It's of a 73-year-old father. Remember, the father's in the cave for the initiation. They have to do push-ups with their sons on their back. So we had planned to get either me or Nagid or another father was going to do the push-ups for this man. This father says, no, I'm going to do it. 73. I said, you serious? He said, yes. I grabbed my phone. I said, I got to record this. But this is what's deep. This man knew he couldn't do it. But the fact that his son needed him to do it, he was going to try. The fact that he knew the God he served was going to step in and help him is why he tried it. Watch this. So all I want you to do is Can you cut the volume up? You can get me if it's a half or whatever. The fact that you out here is blowing my mind. You understand? Okay. All right, let's go. Watch how God uses Zeus. someone to come to his aid. Oh, yeah. Down, down. Come on. Back up. Good. Come on, let's go. Yeah. I got your back. Three. Come on. Four. Come on. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Seventy-three, gentlemen. And I'm not spotting you. Tell me when stop. Nine. We can stop. Good. <laughs> That's his son right there, my son. That's his son. Eight years old. I show that 
Listen, <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Don't, let's leave that alone. Let's leave that alone. Let's leave, let's leave that alone. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, look. He ain't in too bad a shape, right? All right, now. I'm going to tell him that, too, when I see him. <laughs> I share that, I share that only, to, only to show you, brothers. I'm showing you. <laughs> I'm showing. I, I want us all to see the importance of staying in shape for the journey. That's why I wanted you to see that. You don't ever want to get to the place when God calls you to do something and then you can't do it. Because what's deep if you, it, Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. We all know the story about the Jonah. I don't care who you believe, you know about Jonah and the whale. He said, I ain't going to Nineveh. I'm just going to fast forward it real quick. He still went to Nineveh, right? But what happened? He got thrown off a ship, swallowed by a whale, and then vomited onto a beach. If he would have just obeyed him, where he got vomited onto, he had to walk all the way back to what God told him to do to go, and then he had to go another mile, 100, 400 miles or so. You're still going to have to do what he sent you here to do. So why not be in shape doing it? I got injuries right now because I didn't listen. And I still got to do it. So get in shape and rest. And let me keep going because we're almost here. I love the movie The Matrix. Escaping the grinding mentality. Grinding is like a... The word sounds so cool, but this is how Satan works. He, he uses words to deceive you. Grinding is like a fake punch. So if I'm here and I do this the whole fight, if I do this, y'all be like, what's wrong with Wilson? What, what is that? What is he doing? <laughs> but if I do this and I know I need to get his head to go here, he does it, boom, and I knock him out. You say, that's a great fake. That was awesome. That's what Satan does. He shows you things that really aren't there to get you to move in the direction he wants you to go to really hit you. Let me show you what grinding is, really, if we look up the word. Grinding. To wear smooth or sharpen by abrasion or friction. You use the word grinding. You, you say the word grinding in a, a, a manufacturing plant, they're hitting the stop button to see what's going on. Second definition, to reduce to fine particles as by pounding or crushing or pulverize. Three, to oppress, torment, or crush to grind the poor. That's why when you look at most people who grind it, they look wore out. So I, please remove that from your vocabulary. I got to run, I got five minutes. The Matrix, and I stayed up late, gentlemen, to make this for us. The last scene of The Matrix was so powerful. Remember when the bullets, when the, the agent shot at him before, he started doing this, and he had to get out the way of the bullets? Those bullets in our line of work represent stress, anxiety, people pleasing, and grinding. Compassion fatigue is real for us gentlemen. So we can keep trying to dodge, but eventually what happens? He got hit, right? We submit. When you see this scene, I want you to put yourself in his shoes. He gets up, he looks at these same bullets that were shot at him before, and he says, no. And they stop. We got to practice saying no. See, what may be a good thing may not be a God thing. So I have a lot of things I had to turn down and still do to make some tough decisions, because I got one thing to do. Multitasking is really not a biblical principle. Solomon says, better one handful of quietness than two hands full of toil, for truly it's like chasing after the wind. So watch this scene and put yourself in Neo's position.
they do is say no, and they appall, brothers. How? Encourage you, brother. I got literally three minutes on my counter because my brother Chenga got to come up, so I want to leave you with some soul solutions. All right. Number one, we need a minimum of seven hours sleep a day. That's for us in this room. I'm not talking about the guy that just uses a pen all day. I'm talking about gentlemen like us who look in the eyes of boys who are crying or mother single moms who are hurting. We take that stuff home, gentlemen. We need sleep, all right? Uh, number two, five minutes of meditation a day. Um, I wish we had time because I want to teach you, but my brother Changa can definitely tie that in. Um, number three, practice weaning your soul daily, and this is what I mean. This is a practical, Changa may have us do just a four bend, so for some of you, this may be far as you can go. And you're gonna start feeling your hamstrings become tight. What I want you to do is check your soul because your soul is gonna say, man, this is stupid. Man, this is killing me. I want you to say to your soul, this is good for me. You submit to me right now. And I want you to stay. Go a little further and breathe, relax. So you can go further. Stop submitting to your soul. Or you can practice it. How about in a business meeting when you're not supposed to be texting and your soul has you somewhere else? Say, no, chill out. I'm here. Or how about you're on a diet like I was. I love Lay's potato chips. And I couldn't. I, it, it's just a handful just to get in my mouth. <laughs> and that's all. Hey, hey, this is what God told me. He said, if you can't deny them Lay's, you can't deny them legs. All it takes is a little bit. All it takes is that staring too long, and you're gone. And this is my last point, and we got to, well, I got one minute, I'm doing good right now. <laughs> Make your family the base for your work. It hurts my heart, because so many brothers I love are losing their families for this work. That's insane. When you get old and you're sitting on your front porch, what's going to matter to you the most is your family, brothers. They ain't going to call you because of the school you built. I had a brother that was CEO of one popular school in Detroit. He get to work at 7 o'clock, get home at 7 o'clock. I said, when you see your daughters? He said, I, 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 I see them in the morning, and then I put them in the bed. I said, my man, I said, I told him what I just told you. Do you know that he's no longer there? He's gone. But he gave up three years of his children's life for that building. It's not worth it, gentlemen. Look at this picture here. This is what our boys, this is kingdom. But this is what we actually show in our boys. I know many brothers I love hurting, hurting like that. Family is sacred, brothers. When I say strike from your base, if he's here, a lot of times, if I, I need to hit him, I need this new job, I need this money, I can't hit him. So I lean in. Now I'm compromised. He come in and he can't grab me. Now he come in and grab, here, whatever. He's, he's compromised. What I do, I don't kick like that, because he can sweep me now. If I can't hit him, it comes back. Here, I got to bring it back to me. My blows, I don't come out here. I got to wait till I get close to hit him. I never strike now. What Satan does, he gets you 
it puts it right close where you think you can get it, but you can't get it. Then he sets you up. Your family, that's the foundation. That's where the power comes from. This is, this is the power down low. Mike Tyson, he's done, boom, he's low. If you compromise your base, gentlemen, you will lose your power. Solomon says, stop wasting your water in the streets. He's talking about your sperm. That belongs to your wife. This is what I do my work for. I love them. And this, this is the end, but I just want to tell you, it ain't easy. Bless you, brother. It's not easy. Come here, my man. Come here, big brother. Come on. We brothers. Come on, bro. Come on up here, brother. Come on, big man. Come on, man. I got you. Let's go up here and talk. Come on. Let it out, 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 brother, let it out. Cry, brother, let it out. Let it out, let it out, let it out. Don't hold it back. Let it out, let it out. It's too heavy. You ain't supposed to carry it anyway. Let it go. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Let it go. So this is what we need, and that's God. You need to cry, and you need a man with you, because I cry. My wife didn't always smile like that, brothers. That's a sincere smile. She would say things to me, hit me so hard, I'd knock holes in the wall. God said, you ain't ruled your emotions yet. You ain't handled your soul. It costs, it hurts, but this is what it takes. This brother's soul needs to let that stuff go. We got to stop pretending. The soul need, is begging to cry. I need to release this. You'll be so much more effective and powerful. So I pray that this was a blessing to you. And this is just confirmation. Brother Trabian, you know, just moving in another direction, you see what is needed. And I'm thankful for you, brother. And uh, I just want to thank you, Brother Changa. You can come up. Uh, but thank you, brothers. I pray it was a blessing to you. <laughs>